So in this section here, I'm going to attempt to answer a lot of questions that I've been getting. And uh, we're going to go over some numerology here, looking at the placement of the number five, showing you why the number five is so important when we deal with Saturn. Let's talk about these numbers I got right here from zero to one to ten. Zero and one is blue. The number five is blue. Nine and ten is blue. There's something called string theory. String theory can be seen in these numbers that sandwich our numeric system together, meaning the alpha and omega. The numbers that begin our numeric system and the numbers that split our numeric system is seen in blue. So if we're counting 0, 1 and stopping at 10, what we're doing basically if we exclude all of the numbers in between 0 and 1 and 1 and 0 which is 10, what we would be left with is something called a binary code. And these would be the alpha and omega to the numeric system being 0 and 1, 1 and 0. That would be the sun and moon when you look at the cosmos or the yin and the yang because you can see how the zero and the one mirrors itself with this one and zero. If you exclude all of these numbers in between, that's the bread of your numeric system. Again, the binary code. And this is a game called ping. In our dual reality, there are scales. There's a small scale, a large scale. That's the polarity. But because of this polarity, they create something called medium, which is not a scale at all. It is what balances small and large. Medium is equivalent to regular, original. And we're talking about the most high. Medium would be five when we think of our numeric system. We understand that zero is the 360 of life, the egg. It would be equivalent to the great mother because when you look at zero, you're actually looking at the one from a top view. It's the same thing of looking at a flagpole from the top view. And the reason this is the view of the mother is because if you think of pregnancy, this would be the exact positioning of the mother looking down upon the child like they say the most high look down upon the children of the earth so physically in the flesh the woman is in the seat of the most high when you start syncing this up with all of the texts and etc and uh, again i synced this earlier with the baseball field and a bullhorn the pitcher looks down upon the batter from the same position that the mother looks down upon the baby. And the pitcher has the zero, which is the ball, and the baby or the batter, which is the strike, the light, has the bat, which is the one. You can see that here, zero and one. There's no game if she don't pitch the ball. Meaning, the spark is the sperm, and when that sperm activates the egg, the mother is an incubator and serves as a pitcher that shoots that baby from her womb into this world. And that's going from zero to one. It's the magic of birth, and it's not something from nothing. Is that all that exists is energy in life coming in and out of existence. The cosmos is constantly renewing souls just like the water and the wind. When we talk about the divine feminine, 
we already went over the fact that 10 is in. I don't want to keep beating that horse too long. Let's talk about the divine feminine because one word we see in the word feminine is nine. Now, earlier I told you that the number of the goddess was 10, and people are like, well, how can it be 9 and 10? The reason I have 9 and 10 grouped together, because the number 9 is really the last number. 10 is just 0 and 1 all over again. That's why they both are equivalent, of course. They both make up the binary code. Now, 9 is equivalent to 10 when we deal with cosmology, matriarch and patriarch and again the reason you see nine and femi nine and the reason she represent nine and ten when we deal with this type of numerology is because nut is the goddess and her body makes a tent shape it take ten units to make a tent so the woman's pregnant womb would be equivalent to the one and the zero or the arch and the bow or the nut and the gale but she encloses Gail, so this is why she's the 360. To make a long story short, she represents 10 or 10 because we know that Ma'at is the womb or the uterus, and that's the delta as well, or the triangle, which is the tent, the pi ramid. We see nine and femi nine, and we also say that she represents 10 because she's the triangle, and that's the triangle number. And the reason she relates to the nine is because the nine is actually the same thing as the 10. And I point this out a lot. When you look at the nine, you're really looking at the zero sitting on top of the one, which is the nut sitting on top of the gale. This is also a musical note, and it's also the inversion of the six. So we all familiar with six nine, that's Nut Gale. Nine time nine is 81, and eight plus one is nine. Nine plus nine is 18, and one plus eight is nine. Now let's try it with a different number. Nine plus five is 14, and one plus four is five. Nine plus three is 12, and one plus two is three. Nine plus four, 13, and one plus three is four. Nine plus six is 15, and one plus five is six. So basically any number you add with nine, will give you that number because nine is something I like to call a reflective number. Now we see why the word nine is in feminine because the feminine is a reflective creature. She's a magnetic creature and think of mother nature. She reflects to you what you put out. This is the ripple effect ladies and gentlemen. The feminine will take every will take the experience of the masculine and the mother which is the feminine combine them both to create a whole new creature that will live on and embody both realities within itself to evolve the consciousness if you got a messed up daddy a piece of him will be reflected in that child just like the mother if you got Messed up seeds, this is what the Bible talk about when it talk about sowing the seeds. is not just where they sown, but if you got messed up seeds, if I got organic and you got Monsanto, you're not going to have the same yield or crop that I'm going to have. And that's because nature's going to reflect what, what she's given. And it's going to be more than what you gave. So to wrap this up, nine is a reflective number. Just like you looking upon the face of a lake or looking in the mirror. Nine is a mirror.
So you can pretty much multiply 9 with any number and add 9 with any number and it's going to reflect that number. So let's move on to our next number that's in blue. And these are our Trinitarian numbers that represent the firmament, the earth plane, and the Sheol below. Zero and one would be the firmament. Five would be earth or the hive. Five is hive. That's where the underworld meets the firmament. So when you look at the way we greet five and five coming together, we say, give me five. If you look at the boys and girls club in the middle, that's just them telling you the earth because five and five is 10, which is 10. And when they come together, as you can see with those two hands that's in the middle, when they lock up, they create a S in the middle. And uh, surrounding that S is four hands a piece, would be four fingers left. And that would be going from zero to four, and you'll meet at five, and then you go from six to 10. So you got four units surrounding five, which is that medium point. And that's what we represent when we do a covenant or a handshake, which was the first form of a contract. And you make that firmament or that firm, that pact an agreement this way. And if you outline that boys and girls club, you get a hexagon or a yoni. Everything we do is cosmology, brothers and sisters. Five would be earth or the high five is hive. That's where the underworld meets the firmament. And then of course, Sheol, which is representative of nine slash 10. And remember nine is a spiral. And that's exactly what 10 or Zen represents. Zen is why we say things like ascension, descension. So when we reach nine slash 10, we descend and ascend because we go down into the ground and we rise up to the most high. So think of it this way. When we say God, we're saying, ah, that's the sound of the choir, the sound of heaven's gates opening. Remember when you say Allah or Valhalla, which is the name of the Norse heaven we're going to be talking about later. Basically, when you say Ascension, we associate that with God going up. And when we say Descension, we associate that with the devil or the devil going down. So Descension is the devil or the devil down and ascension is up going to God. So basically these are just the different vibrations or tones of Sheol as opposed to heaven. So when you say Sheol, you hear your E that you hear in descension or decompose. And basically what Sheol is, is the cosmos reflection. Is basically Nut's shadow, and it's a transitional realm. Think of it as a dark net, which became darkness. This is basically a trampoline for consciousness. So when you go down into the ground or Sheol, this dark net pongs you to the most high. So basically we go down, then we go up. Because when we go down, that's like a spring. It's like a trampoline. And we spring towards the most high. And when I say we or us, I'm talking about your pure consciousness. That's what happens when your body goes into the ground and no longer can house your consciousness. Your consciousness interacts with that face of the great deep or Sheol. And what that does is direct you back upwards toward the most high. This is ping pong. Once you make it back to the source, the source will then send you on a new assignment on the earth plane. So we go down, up, and back to Midgard again. Down, up, back to Midgard again. This is how Catholics pray. They told you all this process with Jesus. 
They told you when he was put to death, the first thing he did was go to hell. Then they told you when he got to hell, he got the keys and went up to heaven. Then he came back to earth and let everybody know that it was done. When you look at the Catholics, when they get ready to pray, they cross their hands across their chest in the same order. Because that's the journey of the soul. That's the cosmic journey. You go down, up, then back here again. Fear mongerers call this the Saturn moon matrix. But we'll talk about that in another video. I get into it in a couple of videos. So just explore the channel. So we see the significance of nine. The inversion of it is six. Because for you to spring back to the earth, the act of six must take place. So this would be your six nine concept. Now, when you talk about 10 again, that's all just dealing with the portals. We look at the firmament and the underworld as a bouncy type of transitional type place. The equivalent of you landing at the center of a trampoline. This is the whole concept of spring or resurrection, rise erection. But to move on, let's look at the placement of five. Five would be in the same position of Horus or the child which would be Geb in the belly of the mother. Five represents the product, the summit. I tell y'all all the time that the sum of everything is at the center. The the 360 is the feminine, which houses all of the numbers. That's why zero is neutral to all numbers. It can go into all numbers. All numbers can go in it. This is the divine feminine, the cycle of life. And remember that nine can go inside of 360. It's divisive by 360. You can find the same numerological concepts to numbers that are divisible by each other on different scales. So nine is nothing but a hieroglyph for the 360 because it's a spiral. But on a larger scale, it's a wheel that's represented by 360. But when you add the three and the six, it's still nine. If you take this number and make three sixes with it, literally, it's still nine because it's 18. Nine is a cycle number, just like 360 representing this wheel. Because this wheel just don't spin around in a circle, it spins around in a carousel spiral like the night sky. Or like your chakras with the dual serpents wrapping around the Trinitarian pole. So why is seven the number of completion? Because remember that seven is the cornerstone. Seven relates to ten because ten is a pyramid and it takes four sevens to make a pyramid. So 28 equal 10. Four times seven is ten. If you have a seven here and a seven here, a seven here and a seven here because we're making a polarity. You just made the base of a pyramid or a swastika. Four sevens is ten. This is your crap number. Three of them is twenty-one, which is three. That'll give you your trinity. Two sevens is fourteen. That'll give you your five, which is your number for L or Jesus. So seven is a number for completion because when you start duplicating seven amongst itself, it produces these divine numbers that's, rel that's relative to 360. So the numbers shouldn't be looked at as just numeric digits that's used to add and subtract, but rather symbols that represent the cosmic scale. In relation to the sacred geometry that compose our beautiful cosmos. So the number is a glyph that show you a part of the cosmos. Just like a seven is a cornerstone, a bend, which is an angle. And you need these numbers to create the sacred geometrical shapes and patterns that govern our reality. The exact shape of the number is a glyph 
that's vital to the sacred geometry that compose our reality, but the map associated with the number also reveals the exact same thing that the sacred geometry reveals, and that's what I'm showing you here today, and I'm also showing you how the certain deities relate to certain numbers and why because again earlier just like I showed you the five dice it's just a pyramid from the top view it's the same thing as this here's your four corners and this is the duot you have uh, two groups of opposing twos when I just drew your swastika here with your sevens here are your sevens here are your swastika let me try to get creative here so we can see all of it together so now you can see your swastika in there. Think of the Last Supper. You have Jesus at the center, surrounded by his 12 disciples. Well, let's count these numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. When we write out all of our numbers from 0 to 1 to 1, 0, this is all the known numbers in our numeric system. This is the alpha and omega of our numeric system when we be thorough. It equals out the 12 before the numbers start repeating themselves. The number that splits this 12 evenly is 5. So 5 shapes like a serpent. And we already went over how it relates to Saturn. But what it really represents is new life. For example, Jesus. It represents that medium point where the womb is, where all life comes from. For example, the pineal gland. It represents the result of the polarity. So on a woman, this would be the womb. Think of a uterus, you walk up the canal and there's a crossroads. The five would be that walkway, that hallway. And when you say the word hall, you're really saying the word hell or ale because this is all transitional with the cosmic journey and the afterlife. Life and death are synonymous. When we go in the tomb, we go in the womb. So five represents the point where everything balances out and allows for recreation. This is the placement of Ma'at. This would be your small numbers. This would be your high numbers. But this would be simply Zen or neutrality. The thing that splits small and large so that we can even perceive them as dualities. It's the pole that creates the polarity. Everything rests upon the five evenly. When we was in the military, when we went out to the woods, when we wanted the rest, there was nothing to lean up against. You find another soldier and y'all sit back to back and you resting your energy equally and no one is wasting energy. It balances out perfect. You can sit there like you're in a chair. You guys know what I mean. So when you look at the Celtic witches, the triple goddesses, all of them, they balance out the same way. Think of two people sitting back to back and then add two more people with them and make it a four-way thing. And you could do that in four-way as well. They show you this with Ubuntu. So 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. They all leaning toward the center and that point is neutral. That's the zero and the three six equals the nine which are your 90 degrees, your four 90 degrees. 
resting upon the zero. It's the same thing. Zero being the last number on both ends. Everything is founded upon the corners. And those corners form a peak when they meet. And that's your five or your serpent wrapped around a tree of life. A lot of people was asking me, they was like, bro, why do you say five mean IV and VI? I'm not dealing with the exact Roman numeral for five when I say that five means VI. When you deal with Roman numerals, what you're dealing with is series of numbers that are represented in combinations of either X, I, and V. And all of these are numbers of the divine feminine. The X is the X chromosome. The V is the vulva or the delta. And the I is the I am or the Isis. When you look at this I, you're just looking at the mother giving birth to the child in the hospital, as above, so below. That's your ping game, seesaw of life. And again, your small numbers would be zero and one, two, four. You would see that five would be represented at the point where the tension relaxes. Exactly, that would be the womb. So again, the ancients, when they looked at reality, they saw the sun, they saw the moon, which is the mother, and the womb. So the sun is the S-O-N and the S-U-N, and the mother is the moon or the M-O, Mo, mother, moon, because the moon gives birth to phases or faces, and each of them are different expressions of her. And it's all possible through the portal, which is the womb or the point of neutrality. We don't want to spend too much time on that because I just put that up to show you about Roman numerals. And with those combination X, I, V, you express the same numbers I express from 0, 1 to 10. But basically, to answer the question, when I talk about 5 for V, I, 5 is sin or center, so... What I'm trying to tell you is that 5 is an expression of 10 or the binary code. When you say 0, 1, 1, 0, 5 would be the equivalent of that 11 in the middle. Because when you say 11, 11 is L even and 5 represents the place where your L's become even. So think of this swastika as L's. That is an L, that's an L. Remember the four L's make 28 for 10, that creates this 360 10. 0, 1, 1, 0 L even, what represents that five point, where your L's become even and create that neutral point or the peak of your pyramid, the great seal. This is where you lick your envelope, I went over that. And so why do five represent Vi? Because when you say five, you got to deal with phonetics. You got to deal with the way words are pronounced throughout time. When you say the word phi, you're saying so much. The word phi that you see here is also the word phi phonetically. So some people, they don't say phi because their mouth is not able to do the So what you get is vibe, vibe. Hell, just right here in America, when you go up north, they don't even say brothers. They pronounce the T and the H with a V. They say, yo, them my brothers, my brothers with a V. So you got to look at phonetically how we say stuff and then see how it ties in with etymology. So phi is also P-H-I. Phi is also vi and it's also pi, psi. And we already went over those two. All of these are symbols of the great mother. This is your arch or your V. That is your I. And where they intersect is your X. That's all of the symbols that make up Roman numerals. X, I, and V. Right there in that one symbol called a trident. And we, of course this I is the same thing I just broke down with the woman and child as above so below earlier. 
Where the circle is, is the 360 of life. That's the point of tension where they both balance out. And it looks just like a womb, right? A circle with a slit. That's a womb right there. In the five symbol. Mother, child, and the womb. The Madonna and child is a form of a trinity. You got the mother, the child, and what's connecting them both is the nipple, which is the next umbilical cord that you get hooked to. You go from the umbilical cord of your mother to her breast to the pole of the earth and eat from her soil. When I tell you five is vi, we use it in words like revive. All churches have revival, and this is all symbolic of Saturn or recycling energy. Remember I told you five is also Sa, so when you say re -sa, recycle, and the re is just symbolic of repetition, and repetition is ripple tension. That's what creates this entire ecosystem. This is an ancient depiction of the cosmos, a simple diamond structure this way. Of course, this entire structure represents our numeric scale as you can see here from zero and one to ten and five in between which are small numbers on the left and your large numbers on the right but one thing i want you to pay attention to this is that the nine is missing if you look at these numbers they both even your small numbers have three your large numbers have three and you can see your trinitarian numbers which are not really numbers these what birth all numbers, what hold the construct for us to perceive small and large. This would be the pilot's seat, and these would be your both wings. This is where we stiff from. This would be your warm bath water, because you don't want it too cold and too hot, so this is Goldilocks. She called gold because it's linked to the golden age of the goddess. You don't see nine here, and that is because nine is hidden within the entire structure. Meaning if you count the units, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine units. And the reason it's nine units is because this entire structure is made up of a duot of 4.5. What I mean is this, let's give the small portion of our scale a zero and one, and let's give the large portion of our scale a one and zero. So the zero and one is paired with the small numbers and the one and zero is paired with the high numbers. What splits all of this is a five, which means your small numbers get to share a piece of the five and your high numbers get a piece of the five. So each side get to marry the five. And as a result of that, you have four units here and four units here that's paired with the five and that'll give you 4.5 and 4.5 which is nine represent all of the units creating this structure and all of it is nine or the cycle of life the 360 the divine femi nine 360 which is this circle divided by five equals 72 and of course seven and two is nine 72 is also, uh, when you multiply them, you get 14, which is 5. Also, we know that 9 plus 5 is 14, which is 5, because it's going to always lead you back in the middle. This 72 is very important because when you t I already told you what 4 7s represent. 4 7s is your swastika, the base of your pyramid, or the four pie slices that make your wheel. So we went over what four sevens is, but Brother Sanchez, what about two sevens? How is that relevant to L and Saturn? Let me show you the difference. This is the base. That's the base of your pyramid with the fifth point. Them four sevens equal 10, which is the same thing as this envelope or this pyramid from a top view. But the two sevens is the same thing. Let's split this up. If I give you two sevens, and ask you what to do with them two sevens to create a pyramid in sacred geometry. 
you could do the same thing. So five is the number of the pyramid. Check this out. Seven plus seven is 14, which equals five. We know that that means the pyramid from the top view. We looking down on the pyramid. So two sevens in sacred geometry will create a pyramid from a front view like this. Here go your two sevens that created five. And if you take your two sevens, put them back to back, they'll create this right here. This is a pyramid. This is the God L. This is the God L with his two arms, just like Christ. And those are your two sevens that make the five because it's all L from different viewpoints. So if you outline this, you, you, you get the capstone, the all seeing eye of L. Even if you stand them up, it's still L or Venus because it's the Delta. What I'm showing you is that when you add these numbers mathematically, you get five, which is the number that represents the deity, that represents the sacred geometrical shape that the number actually draw out as a glyph. Rewind everything I said and you will see. If you still don't get it, let me show you this then. Nine plus nine equals 18. An eight is a symbol of infinity or an hourglass, one hourglass. So nine plus nine equals 18 or one eight. So nine plus nine equals one hourglass when we add them mathematically. But check this out. Nine plus nine also equal one hourglass when you add them geometrically. Because here go a nine and here go a nine. When you bring them together, you get that one eight that you got when you added them mathematically. So nine plus nine equals one eight, but nine plus nine geometrically literally equals one eight when you put them together in polarities and balance them out in sacred geometry and ease the tension. You turn them back to back like we used to sit in the military to rest. And this is how you rest or reset. Remember set is that dark deity. And this is also how you add a sacred geometry. This is really deep stuff. And I'll be doing more demonstrations like that to show y'all how you add in sacred geometry and how you sync it. This is what I like to call syncretism on steroids or thorough syncretism.